And as you all know, our next talk is coming from Elise herself. And this talk is going to be the case for a terrestrial analogs data portal. All right, let me share my screen. And great, are you seeing it in presenter mode or the correct mode? It's good from here. Okay, sounds good. Well, um, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for um, hanging around. Um, I'll get right into it. So, and this is um, a perfect, uh, Sarah's talk was perfect uh, to lead into this because I'm going to be talking about um, community needs for data preservation and um, our work in developing a terrestrial analogs data portal. Oops. Uh, there. There we go. Okay, so many of us are familiar with the PDF, the Planetary Data System. This is an existing highly respected and highly used repository that is primarily used for planetary mission data. It has a very well-defined data and metadata standards, and it's also peer reviewed. Now the problem um, when it comes to terrestrial analog data is that there are no current standards for archiving and um, <clears throat> There's no current standards or, or repository. And in addition, like Sarah mentioned, there's a huge range of data types and formats and volumes when it comes to collecting data in the field. And so it's, it's pretty tricky to figure these things out about how to properly archive your data. And this is something that's recognized uh, throughout the community. The PDE IRV report that came out earlier this year had a finding that there's a need for a primary repository for planetary analog data. We also see this uh, within the community. So here at the USGS, uh, two years ago, we had a, released a community survey. Those, uh, as a summary of those findings, we found that most people who responded are willing to share their data and samples, and they would also use an archive to find existing data and samples of planetary analog studies. However, there is a lack of knowledge and a lack of guidance in how to find this data and, and also how to archive the data. So it's not uh, common knowledge how to archive the data. And also everyone has their own data in kind of disparate repositories. Um, so they can be difficult to locate. In addition, um, there's a general lack of funding and time to complete the archiving process. We revisited some of these themes last month during the terrestrial analogs for planetary exploration workshop. We had a breakout session on data archiving and once again, people mentioned that they don't know really what it takes to create a good repository. The folks aren't, don't know, they don't have the proper guidance towards archiving their data. And a big part of that is time. It actually takes a good chunk of time to properly arch archive data. And if we don't know how much time is involved, we can't write that into our proposals, then we don't have the funding to do that archiving. And it kind of, um, it kind of falls off our plates because we all are very busy with other things. Another big topic of conversation during the workshop was that uh, a data and a data archive needs to make sure that the data that's put in there is usable and it's very trustworthy. So usability and trustworthy are dependent on having clear metadata standards. And then on top of that, we have to make sure that there's a low barrier to access and use. We don't wanna make it exceedingly difficult for folks to access this data and use this data, especially if they're, they're early career or maybe using a method or data type they haven't used before. So at the USGS at Astrogeology, we have started creating our own data portal, um, which is pretty exciting. And this is based on the USGS science-based catalog. So the USGS science-based is a repository. It's a trusted long-term repository that already exists. We use it internally within the USGS to, to host our data. And um, then it becomes publicly available. And it has, it has strict uh, metadata standards, it's trusted within the community. It allows for persistent URLs and central search and discovery of the entire USGS catalog. And then on top of that, it also meets the legal and functional uh, requirements uh, needed by NASA for a data portal uh, repository. So it's nice that we have this catalog already available that we can build on to make a terrestrial analog data portal. Now, what, what we're hoping, well, not hoping we're gonna do it, um, when the data portal is fully functional, it will allow for both direct hosting of data. 
so that folks can upload their data directly to our repository, but also connected to other trusted repositories. So that I know there are other, um, I know there's an astrobiology repository, there are other repositories out there, and we wanna be able to link to them so that we don't have to recreate everything and re-submit um, everything. And some good news, we have a beta site that is functional as of this month. It is open for archiving contributions and um, this first version allows for basic geospatial and text search of science base. So just as a quick preview, this is what the, the main page looks like. There's a URL here, I can copy it into the chat after, uh, after I'm done speaking. And you can see in the main uh, interface right here, we have some geospatial data. Right now it's showing uh, the impact crater database for the earth and we're eventually going to update it with more. You can see there's one, one volcano up here, polar in Iceland as our one, our one um, volcanic analog for now. And then the basic functionalities that it has so far um, up here is information about how to contribute. So you can click on there. There's information about how you can how you can contribute our metadata standards, the contact info. We'd love it if people get in contact with us if you have, want to uh, start contributing data. Uh, you can also currently search by location. So you draw a box, you can find um, all the data submitted that's within the science base. So this doesn't it doesn't necessarily cure query anything that's terrestrial analog related. Right now, it just it just uh, returns all the data geospatially within that area. You can also search by keyword. So look up volcanic or meteor crater, whatever you're interested in. Like I said, this is um, beta. It's very, very new website. So uh, if you visit, feel free to offer some uh, suggestions about, about uh, improving it in the future. <clears throat> so going back to metadata, just because this is such an essential part of archiving data, um, we recognize that metadata is really essential to accessing, discovering, using, and trusting any sort of data um, that we're going to find. And Science Space, which is really nice about our this data portal, is that Science Space already supports uh, high standards for metadata, and it has um, open web services for geospatial data. And we're working on having interoperability beyond the system, so in connecting other trusted repositories to our systems. You know, some of the challenges with metadata, especially, you know, with field work, as we've been saying that there are so many different types of data, is that you need to have commonalities for some entry types, but then also be able to accommodate specific needs of those different data types. So um, coming up with, meta, you know, properly having metadata standards for things like field photos, but also for magnetometer measurements. On top of that, um, one of the main things, and, and PDS does this, is being able to handle and um, include different process levels of data. So having raw, processed, and derived data sets. This is really helpful um, just for, for different levels of scientists. You know, if you have someone new to the field, they're going to want derived data sets, but then other folks might want to um, get different things out. They might want the raw data. Right about one minute. Thank you. <clears throat> so as a use case, um, I'm part of the survey geodes team, which overlaps a lot with the NASA GIF team. We used uh, the pandemic and our inability to do field work as an opportunity to look into data capabilities. So we've been working with them um, to look at metadata standards, to look at how we can best uh, share data, both with the public, so through something like ArcGIS Online, sharing data that way, but also internally before things can be um, properly archived, sharing things within a team using Google Drives and things like that. Another thing we've been working on is developing complementary readme files, readme file templates. So these are templates that folks can take into the field and it helps um, with all those steps in prepping for field work when you're in the field, after the field, what you need to do, what you need to record in order to um, get to the point where you can create this robust metadata that then can be shared with the community later on. And uh, Next step for that is to link these repo the existing repositories that GIFT is using to our repository. And finally, as some next steps, yeah, we plan to, we wanna continue extending the capabilities of the analog data portal. You know, since we're in the very early stages, there's, there's a lot of opportunities here. We are also working on collating field guides, both for in-field learning and for virtual learning, and also in expanding our physical sample collection. The USGS, we already house 
a few sample collections and we are looking into the feasibility of expanding that to house more collections. Um, cool, so with that, we have, I'll take any question. I might be out of time for questions, but we can talk more in the discussion. Um, but please contact us if you have, if you wanna visit the website, um, give us some feedback. If you also want to contribute, um, you know, for now it's going to be test cases, but we welcome all sorts of test cases to try to um, input data into our, our data portal where we're really excited to share it with the community and we wanna hear what you have to say. Cool, thank you.